an editor win this truck plus five thousand dollars cash and all you've got to do is go to our website lmpgear.com place an order and you're automatically entered to win it's that simple but once we hit the end date for the giveaway it is gone and this opportunity is gone with it well i finally got a burn barrel out here and i'm gonna try to clean up the burn pit that is currently just a mess and it's actually quite nice i've never used a burn barrel before but it's just you know a big giant old oil barrel that i cut the top off and use it to burn stuff it's actually kind of nice because when you stick like sticks and crap that i pick up out of the yard they stand up straight and as the fire burns they just fall down into the barrel so it completely contains everything which is really really nice i don't know why i just thought maybe you guys would want to know what i'm up to this morning and on another note i was trying to put the winch on this atv which is a struggle let me ask you guys something so this is a 2007 honda rincon 680 and it came with a badlin 2500 pound winch which is a pretty simple one i'm pretty sure it's you know manual pull out and then it's got the winch of course to you know retract it back in but this is a bracket he gave me and i think it's homemade <laughs> but um it looks like there's plenty of room right here to set the winch on and thread it into the studs that i don't know if you can see them you can see it under the bracket there that stud sticking up there and there's another one in the front but the only problem i'm having is i don't know where else it bolts on or how it's supposed to bolt on because there's nowhere for it to bolt in the front which just seems kind of weird the only holes close to these ones are going downward and i mean i'm pretty sure that with these rear ones slid up and bolted through and this bracket fanned out like that to where you know obviously it's not going to pull through this front brush guard or whatever that the skid plate mounts to or framing here but i don't want it to be like kind of loose in there you know what i mean not that i'm probably going to hardly ever use the winch where my properties are currently but i'm just kind of um, puzzled on how else i'm supposed to fasten that in there there was no instructions because i'm pretty sure that bracket was like replicated based on what they're supposed to be like and then somebody made their own homemade version but yeah any pointers would be greatly appreciated on another note we've got rosine's custom grill here and we're going to be doing some stuff to rosine over these next couple of weeks just some small things here and there one of those things is going to be getting new wheels and tires in for rosine which has been kind of a struggle because we sold them with the hopes that we were going to be able to find something that she really liked local and just pick something up but that hasn't worked out everything that we find local people want an arm and a leg for wheels used wheels and tires and we're we're finding stuff that's like 50 percent tread with a little bit of curb rash for almost the price of brand new stuff the difference is i just didn't want to have to wait a few weeks to get stuff in however i believe we decided on a set and i think i should be getting a response today to be able to put the order in for them it's something you've seen before not the exact setup but something you've seen before on this channel but it's been quite some time and uh, i think reagan's gonna really like the look of it and i know that i am because right now the thing is looking quite pitiful on those 18 inch fourth gen stock rides nice doesn't look so nice but we're going to be taking all of the small bolts off the back of this custom sport grill that reagan had made for rosine and um, what we're going to be able to do is take all these small nuts out and then this whole middle insert is actually a powder coated insert and in the center it says rosine and this is all welded to this heavy duty metal mesh insert and so if i pop out all of these screws then we can paint match just you know just have miguel paint match this bezel here all the way around the main big body part of the grill and then leave the insert in the middle black leave the rosine in the middle the way that she has it and then just everything around it will be flame red which is her color for that truck and we'll put probably like a cummins badge here unless she gets like a custom like flower or something made for that and rosine actually doesn't really have anything to do with a flower or roses at all it has to do with the town that her grandpa was born and raised in it's in rosine kentucky it's a real real small town but it's just kind of went with her truck you know it was red she thought you know roses are red rosine's the town that my grandpa grew up in to her it made sense and it's sentimental so the name of the truck was based on that and the red theme is just kind of based on a flower but the actual name rosine came from uh the small town her grandpa was born and raised in but we do have a paint code for her truck we thought that it might have been like some kind of aftermarket paint color because i just have never seen that many 
second gens that are like this super bright red i've seen a lot of like the maroonish colored ones or the darker reds that were factory but i didn't realize that this super bright red was actually a color option from chrysler it's called flame red and it's color code pr4 and i was like this truck maybe it is a factory color and i just don't realize it so i looked up you know red second gen and i saw a lot of red second gens that were that that like tone of red like super bright and i looked up red second gen paint codes and there was like the maroon slash burgundy color and then there was like a, some other type of red that was more like a dark red and then there was like the flame red and i was like that's the one that's what it is because we've always kind of called it fire truck red just because we didn't know the actual color code for it but that seems to be it and that's actually the color code that is on the door um i just we just overlooked it because we just assumed that it was an aftermarket red and then the bumper trying to find a sport bumper if we can find one if we can't she wants to go with a fourth gen bumper and then we're gonna get the mirrors grill and bumper dropped off and get that paint work done and then hopefully around that same time we can get that paint work done the new wheels and tires should be here for rosine <laughs> Something we just fixed, which was actually not really a hard fix. Pretty, pretty simple. This is an older version of a CTS screen for these Dodge Cummins trucks. Um, this is in my wife's truck or 24 valve. This thing wasn't working for the longest time. And all I did was unplug both the cords in the back, left it unplugged for two or three minutes, and then just plugged it back in. Basically, nothing was working. So you can do zero to 60, quarter mile. Anyways, fuel pressure exhaust temperature boost pressure i mean you've got you got your gauges and then you can choose your power level i don't really notice too much difference between the power levels but this one's just pretty much we always just kind of keep it on power level two but i mean it does have several options there's drive let's go up to four race mode that seems kind of fun extreme performance what was it on i want to know what two is tow okay tow mode that's good mileage ha <laughs> yeah let's do this one good fuel mileage that's what i'm all about right there those good fuel mileages i wouldn't mind doing some testing with this and seeing like what the actual noticeable differences are between the different settings because this thing we've pretty much just driven it on tow setting for the last like two years but I am kind of curious on how much of a difference those settings actually make on a truck like this. Okay, so we're over here at one of the properties here, working in the barn on the King Ranch. So what problem have you been having with the King Ranch recently? Tailgate doesn't want to open. Tailgate doesn't want to open. Classic. You have to lift it up and sometimes you have to push in, sometimes you have to go up real quick and fast. So I'm hoping that it's as simple as some clean loop and then maybe some adjustments. I've never done it before. Apparently everybody on YouTube knows how to do it, so I'm gonna give it a shot. From what I understand, you remove this plastic cover, then there's a few hole openings, then there's some linkage in there that just kind of over time, the mechanism causes it to slowly loosen and slide out a little bit more, a little bit more, which causes it to not unlatch as swift as it's supposed to, not to mention the mechanisms over here, the springs and stuff can get kind of wore yeah, out. and. Then Dry. I asked the dealership to do it, and they said the reason it wasn't open was because there's, this was bent. That doesn't make any sense to me, so I, <laughs> it might be true, but at this point, I'm going to disagree. But wait, what's bent? Well, this is a little bit, but the mechanism still seems to have plenty of... There's plenty of wiggle room, though. That's my point. Like, if you look at the gap, there's a huge gap still, but whatever. Yeah. Not all dealership employees so know what they're see. talking about we're gonna see. i just think they didn't <laughs> fix it <That's> <laughs> i asked somebody else to fix it one time too and they were looking at it and i get it back and it wasn't even touched <laughs> must be one of those things but it should be pretty easy and the other thing is too cab lights the cab lights seem to not want to turn on the reflection of the lighting makes it look like they're on right now actually but no so right now he's got 
one cab light I think that stays on, which is the middle, right? I think so. And then the rest kind of come and go as they please. <laughs> we're gonna try to fix the tailgate first, and we're gonna see if we can mess with the cab lights a little bit. Old school, like Wizard of Oz crowd. <laughs> I love this thing though. What is it? It's an oiler. Are you so, yeah, you just, I put, um, <laughs> See that? <laughs> you know they, you know they make this stuff called like WD forty and PB oh, yeah, blast that like comes in a can. I just think these are cool. Those are old school. I mean, it's cool. I just put some. I like, think synthetic oil in there. So. But in here. Again, we do have all this stuff here too. This is your main mechanism, your main linkage stuff that can kind of. These rods can kind of slide out over time a little bit at a time, and it can just kind of like cause your tailgate to not open. Oh, I'm standing here watching my uncle fix my truck. What are the odds of that happening? Hopefully you guys heard everything. When I adjusted it the first time, I moved it like a bunch of grooves over and then it didn't even latch. And he's like, well, that fixed it. <laughs> so then I just like put it back to where it was. You can see the rust right there, like the rust line. And I literally just moved it over like four threads on that thing. And then it, show them the test, show them the test. Whew. That's like perfect. That's perfect. As you can see, we got the flickery dude uh, cab lights here. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure what all the flickering is for, though. Christmas time in July. Flickery, flickery, <laughs> flickery. They're like not some. Of, and then this one's not even light. When you were pulling up to get us that night when the CRV's radiator hose popped up, I never told him about that. You pulled up and you had one cab light on in the middle, which. It's not on right now unless the power's off. But you had one cab light on and all the rest were like flickering in the dark. And I was like, I wonder if my dad knows that all of the cab lights are pretty much shot. They might just suck. I might go with that option. They were like $4 on Amazon. No. <laughs> <laughs> It'll last forever for $3. <laughs> Some Chinese made freaking junk. Cab light. What I don't know is why is this one strobing? There's just one ball. <laughs> oh, wait. Had a different one come on for a second. <laughs> and then you got the Lone Ranger here in the middle. <laughs> that's the only one that's actually working. That do you want to run the auto zone too or no? It don't matter. But, but, I, but I will say this <laughs> if you're not going to run the auto zone, we should probably just take them all out so at least it doesn't look <laughs> going down the road. That is you, a good point. Pull them all out. I'm just saying. Cock the hole. <laughs> Done with the strap. I love it when you turn it off and that turbo is like, whew, it's like, it like barks and like is winding down. It's kind of thinking about this as we were wrapping up with pulling the cab lights and not actually fixing them today. <laughs> but I was thinking, kind of fixed it. yeah, he, he said, we kind of fixed it. <laughs> we kind of made it look a little less dumb, but the bulbs are cheap. You can get them at um, AutoZone really easy and just throw them in. But I was telling my dad, I said, you should do like an actual review. I don't think he's ever done an actual review on his own truck. 
And in August, it'll be eight years since he's bought this truck and he's been the only owner of it since it was brand new and it came off the trailer that was being pulled around by Cummins 4500. And um, the Indian guy was like, only Cummins, man. Only Cummins, enjoy your truck. <laughs> He's, yeah. So I told him to list the top three or four things that have been major downfalls to this truck or just like annoying things that he's had to deal with. And for the most part, they have just been annoying little things for the most part, but yeah, take it away. Well, it's, it's been a really good truck. I know major uh, qualms other than I would guess the probably the biggest complaint I would have is the turbo situation. It was a force upgrade and allowed us to get into the pusher system, better turbo and that kind of thing but just under 100,000 miles uh, uh, turbo went out. So that was kind of the most expensive pain in the butt. And then the only other thing that I can think of other than that stupid tailgate that we just fixed, which is a minor thing, was um, I always had a problem with the back slider window. Sometimes like the kids would want to slide it open, they just hit the button. And then one time, I think it was in the middle of winter, we were on a trip. <laughs> And then somebody, for whatever reason, maybe one of the kids farted or something, like, for whatever reason, the back window came open and it wasn't shut. And so I'm like, what the heck? So, and that had happened several times, but you know, usually after a few minutes and dorking around the switch, it would shut. But then one time it didn't in the winter and it just kind of sucked. So that was one thing. And then just most recently when I took it into the shop, the reason it was down there was because the back, I came out of the, I came out of the house one day and uh, the back uh, window on this driver's side, it was just stuck down. So I don't know what the yeah. heck it was, but for whatever reason, it just kind of, um, the mechanism inside broke and it was down and then, so they just fixed it. But yeah. uh, other than that, I mean, from other than the turbo, like everything has been good. The tranny has been, praise God, really good. The brakes have been fantastic. Tie rod ends finally needed to replace, but you didn't even take it in because you had any issues no. with driving it. They were just like, oh yeah, these are bad. But then again, now you're looking at it, that dent on the tailgate, that little teeny tiny dent on the inside. They also said, that was bad and that's why you're <laughs> so you might have just paid for tie rod ends for no freaking reason <laughs> you think i'm serious like i mean it, it can't hurt to have new ones but it's just kind of like they also said your tailgate couldn't be fixed unless you take it to a body shop and it was literally it like a yeah it was pb blast and literally yeah. ford luckily with their tailgates they made reusable plastic clips so you could just unclip it adjust it and snap it back yeah, down the other thing i just thought of one thing i know it's four things but again it was electrical yeah so it was you remember this mirror here wouldn't uh just kind of stopped working it wouldn't fold in wouldn't fold yeah out, wouldn't extend or anything and they're not cheap mirrors and so i had to buy a replacement and i went with the best one i could find which was it was like a, it was like a thousand i think bucks. it was a1 a1 auto or rock auto or yeah a1 i think it might have been yeah, I don't know. One or the other. But it was like a thousand bucks to replace that one mirror. Um, but that was the other thing. Again, it was all electronic kind of like little stuff. You know what I mean? That's the eight year review on the 6.7 Power Stroke. But yeah. One owner, 113,000 miles? About, yeah, it's got about 113,000. But overall, for the money that I put into it because of necessity, so minimal compared to like what I've had to do with just other vehicles, what many people have to do with other vehicles. So yeah. Um, you got a reliable diesel and it uh, it pulls like crazy. I've never had a problem with it with any trailers or the when it's hooked up to a trailer. So, yeah, I'd buy another one in a heartbeat. One thing we didn't talk about, the paint, the paint peel, the clear coat peeling and like under the bed edges and stuff. You wanted to go there, huh? I, sorry. <laughs> yeah, listen, you didn't list it. And I was thinking maybe that's, you know, something somebody might want to know because like it's not that old of a truck you know because people always make fun of the, the second gen dodges like oh the clear coat always peels on those and i'm like those things are 25 years old <laughs> like that's a little bit different you know this isn't that old of a truck and maybe it started way sooner than 25 years there are a few little spots um mostly towards uh, the bed liner should we show them up close yeah sure i just noticed this today i i never really had paid attention to it the tailgates tailgates the the big thing but yeah the clear coat is like chipping away on the tailgate and then, this and, then it, this side well. and then this side as well this is the worst yeah but you know for the most part that's something that like even miguel could probably take it from like this body line mask everything down and just like pop these off and just redo the bed rails because that's the only clear coat peel so in the defense of the paint on the truck everything else seems to be totally fine it's just the little edge which it could have something to do with this vibrating on it for eight years and then kind of making making it chip a little prematurely i don't know yeah. weaken the clear coat there i don't know if that if that's really a thing or not other than that it's 
It's been great. Closing statement. This is the end of the video. I'm going to let you close it out. Dodges suck, power strokes rock. Okay, that's not, not, really. It's not really how you end it on it. It's a mainly a, a Dodge <laughs> channel. <laughs> These guys are like getting ready to type a mean comment. Yeah, I know, right? Until <laughs> they realize you're kidding. Um, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah.